Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Saturday edition of the Pan-African Debate, an opportunity to equally wish you a Merry Christmas as we come back to work and look at the politics in Central Africa Republic as the nation prepares for the presidential election. 2020 it is slated for tomorrow and the Constitutional Court has confirmed the holding of these contested presidential elections. The tensions are actually high ahead of the presidential and legislative elections in the Central African Republic. The Constitutional Court confirmed the holding of the elections on December 27, despite protests and threats are made of from the rebel coalition, the CPC, led by ex-president Francois Bozizé. The mineral-rich nation has been chronically unstable since independence and after the 2013 civil war where the Seleka Muslim rebels ousted Bozize from power. Thousands of civilians have died and a quarter of the 4.9 million population has fled their home. The Coalition of Patriots for Change, the CPC, formed on December 19th, are accusing Tuadera of fixing the elections at his advantage and have decided to break their 72-hour ceasefire, blaming it on the irresponsible stubbornness of the government to suspend Sunday's election, as they diligently stated. Sunday's elections were deemed a key test of the strife on country's ability to recover stability, but the constant military and technical assistance from Russia, France, Uganda, Rwanda, and Cameroon due to the incessant rebel violence uh, the fate of the nation's peace remains questioned. We look at this today in the Pan-African debate, of course, with the participation of our analysts in the studio and your participation, you watching us today. Welcome back once again, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for joining us on the Pan-African Debate this Saturday as uh, we look at politics in Central African Republic. The Constitutional Court, as was precise, uh, precise in my preamble, the Constitutional Court of the country has confirmed the holding of tomorrow's presidential elections amid rebel violence that has been threatening the nation since 2013 and in recent weeks. The Coalition for Change has been calling on the government to suspend the holding of tomorrow's elections due to some uh, 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 reasons that the state president, Faustin Arkan Stwadera, is trying to fix the elections in his advantage and equally noting that Central Africa Republic, the nation of about 4.9 million people, has been unstable since independence and it got critical uh, in 2013 after the civil war that led to the death of thousands of people and has left most of the citizens uh, to be refugees in neighboring countries. Looking now at uh, the Central African Republic's presidential elections that are coming up tomorrow, what are your appreciations? What are your expectations? In the studio with me this afternoon for the two hours program, we shall be analyzing with the assistance of uh, our panelists uh, the state of Central African Republic's uh, uh, politics. We shall be analyzing this. And uh, at my, uh, by my left, I have Mr. Fa Elvis. He's a political analyst and a journalist. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, Rita. Good afternoon to the thousands of uh, millions of televiewers who are watching us, uh, both in Cameroon, Africa, and the world at large. And greetings to the good friends from uh, the cities of Bwabwa. We have uh, Bahoma. We equally have uh, Bangi. We have Bangasu. And our good friends who are out there at Bwaro and uh, Butangaro. Those are all our major towns out there in the Central African Republic. Um, it's a pleasure being here today. I think we'll be able to give just exactly what is expected to be on the ground in terms of political analysis. Thank you for Elvis for being with us this afternoon. Equally by my right is uh, Mr. Tagia Fumakon, you are a human rights uh, watch activist from Cameroon. Thanks for being with us this afternoon. Hello, Rita. Uh, it's a great pleasure at the end of the year to have um, to give my views, you know, in one of uh, the key problems because you are having here in front of us a country that should be rated as one of the richest countries in the world, but it is rated as one of the poorest countries in the world. But allow me, Rita, also yeah. to say uh, hello to our friends in, in Equatorial Guinea. So, uh, buenas tardes. Estamos... Uh, uh, terminamos uh, este año de 2020 
para atacar un nuevo año y tenemos este problema en Central African Republic. Uh, so, uh, yo digo buenas tardes. Es solo lo que yo puedo decir esta tarde. Buenas tardes, a amigos de Guinea, Guinea Ecuatorial. Muchas gracias a todos por estar en Camerún. Venga, ya, África. Ahora también hay problema. Es centro África Central. Hey, well, thank you for giving me the opportunity to use one of our dialects in Cameroon yeah, to I'm say hello you. at the end of the year to everybody. Okay. Yeah. Should I say gracias? Ah, gracias. <laughs> you can say gracias. Okay. <laughs> thank you, Tagia, for coming for being with us uh, this afternoon. Uh, joining us live equally from uh, Maryland is uh, Mr. Eugene Pogua Pelema. Thanks for being with us this afternoon. You are the co-founder of the Convention for Pan-Africanism and Progress. Thank you for having me on your show. I salute your audience and all the panelists. And I want to say something to my people. Mi bara la kwe, la so ke saratneti kodroti de Afrika, nandoti Afrik media, ndalcha eleksyon so ke ga na kodroti. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, uh, Mr. Pua. Thanks for being with us this afternoon. All right, the program is going to run for uh, uh, two hours and it will be ending by 14 hours GMT. It's an interactive program. So by the time the lines are going to be opened, we are going to uh, receive your calls and your participation on our Facebook Live and equally on the calls on the numbers that are going to appear on your screen. Central Africa Republic presidential elections December 27 tomorrow amid rebel violence. Let's get to listen to a report uh, detailed compared by our intern, uh, Sharon Techu. She gives us more insight. Sharon Techu, let's hear. In recent weeks, the Central Africa Republic has registered a series of violent attacks, instability, and political uprisings ahead of the December 27 presidential and legislative elections. As these elections approach, the country is experiencing a large deployment of an army force from the United Nations, Rwanda, Russia and France. Human Rights Watch on December 23rd disclosed that at the verge of presidential elections in the country, a new rebel coalition in the Central African Republic has created havoc in the run up to the December 27 elections. According to pundits, the large presence of foreign troops in the country could be a tool of destabilization in the upcoming elections. In view of the polls, the UN disclosed that the country's fourth largest town, Bambari, which was seized by rebels on Tuesday, ahead of the elections this weekend, is in the hands of United Nations peacekeepers and national security forces. In the run for presidential elections are 16 candidates, including three women, and President Tuadera, who is seeking a second term. This number adds to more than 1,500 candidates for 140 seats in the National Assembly. The presence of foreign powers, France and Russia, have been suspected to be a means of gaining influence in the region. According to reports, France sent warplanes to the country late Wednesday, with French President Emmanuel Macron condemning attempts to destabilize the country. At this Central Africa Republic's request, Russia and Rwanda have sent hundreds of military personnel to support the troubled country. The presence of foreign powers in the fragile economy is thus questionable in the coming of a suspected coup d'etat. The government of the Central Africa Republic pointed accusing fingers at the country's former president Francois Bouzizé, alleging that the former leader who was denied participation in the race is planning a coup d'etat in the lead up to the December 27 presidential and legislative elections. In recent days, government forces clashed with rebels as the United Nations peacekeeping force tried to prevent a blockage of Bambi, the capital. Despite a 2019 peace agreement between government and 14 rebel groups, intermittent violence and human rights abuses have continued. The mineral-rich Central African Republic has faced deadly inter-religious and inter-communal fighting since 2013, when predominantly Muslim Selika rebel groups seized power from Bozizé after long claiming marginalization. The elections of December 27 will thus prove the authority of the National Convergence Party at the head of affairs in the country. Thank you, Sharon Techu, for that uh, report coming back to the studio now. 
This is the Pan-African debate. In the studio with me, uh, Mr. Fa Elvis, the Constitutional Court in Central Africa Republic has confirmed the holding of the controversial uh, December 27 polls amidst uh, rebel violence and uh, uh, that has that's been threatening the nation since uh, the last two weeks. Uh, you understand that the same scenario that is happening in Central African Republic is the same scenario in Cameroon. I say the same scenario. Mm -hmm. And France is at the back part masterminding all of this. You realize that in a country where you have foreign powers with their tentacles on it, if you look at it, look at the natural resources and economic potentials of Central African Republic. You'll be told that most of their export has to do with huge amounts of timber, gold, and diamond. And of course, we are told that their gold deposit is ranging one of the most influential in the world as of now, and unexploited even, excluding those that are already are under on exploitation. So it means that if you look at the country of slightly above 4 million persons, what is endowed in that country has to do with natural rich potentials, which has attracted these hoodlums from the West to move into that country. I will be able to let you know that if you look at it clear, clearly, when Francois Bozizi was in power and a few minority Muslims took on arms to unseat him, the simple reason was just for the fact that they were talking about marginalization. And if Bozizi, who was not delegated by France, had not, if he had taken time to listen to these uh, rebels, would not have been where we are today. Mm. But you know we have stubborn regimes masterminded by France. And France will tell them what to do and what not to do. If you look at it, when Bozizi did not yield fully to the demands of the young of the guys, of course, he was ousted. Now, where is the complication coming? Between the Seleka and the Balaka rebels, they all have sophisticated weapons. The question now is, who are those furnishing them with these weapons? I have told the West over and over that they think they are very intelligent. But they should understand that their time is running out. At the period in time when they want to teleguide us and pretend that Africans are independent, especially French-speaking African countries, including Cameroon. Now, with the disguised independence they give, they go behind to teleguide the leaders they have put in place as Tujis. I say the leaders as Stooges. They hear me very well. And so in the course of what is happening in the Central African Republic, you get to understand that because Bozizi did not play its card well, they were forced to bring in, of course, Tuadera comes in just to replace what Bozizi would have done. And if you look at it, look at the attention being paid to Central Africa until you get military planes, French military planes, hovering in. Russia coming in. With Rwanda, we could say out of patriotism, we will not have blamed Rwanda because if you look at their history, they have the belief that Africans are supposed to be stable because the more we are stable is the more we become economically independent too. Mm -hmm. But then, away from that, look at the distance between Russia and Central Africa Republic. What are they doing there? We understand some six years ago that most of the blue caps who were sent there, they were busy exploiting gold, and they also had cases of human rights abuses. I'm sure our brother here must have known about that, but where Mr. they uh, took advantage of uh, you know sleeping with those poor girls over there uh, doing atrocities because they needed they saw that they, they, they were vulnerable. Pictures most of the were taken. yes, pictures were taken. As I look at the situation now. I have said Constitutional Council or su Supreme Court, Constitutional Court in Central Africa is another sham, just like the thing in Cameroon, just like those things in French Central African countries. Because they will tell you that when there is disorder, that is when the incumbent, masterminded by the colonial masters, make their gains true. Of course, Tuadora has already won. I have already seen it here. Because if you look at the way he was escorted at the convoy, ask yourself, do we have any other position that had a security backup from Russia and from France and from Rwanda? as per se, no. So the issue here is that the election result has already been known. If you see the state accusing Bozizi, it is because of that fear of the unknown. But the main issue is that you cannot have a country that has issues to regularize, just like Cameroon, where the English-speaking part of the country tells you they'll be marginalized. You forget about them, you go in for presidential election. You forget about them, you go in for twin elections. And today you go in for regional elections. And you keep on brandishing that there is democracy. That is the same kangaroo system that operates in Cameroon, French-speaking African country, 
that is operating in Togo is operating in any other colony masterminded by France. Okay. But you know, as I'm landing, mm. the main issue is clear. We know the results already. But the question now is, sending the weapons and thousands of them in Central African Republic, is it worth the trouble? What is stopping France from coming in if he thinks that he loves Africans? Of course, I don't believe that a man can love you than himself. Mm -hmm. I don't think so. <laughs> so if they come in, what is stopping them from getting to this coalition of the rebel factions and asking what is your worry and addressing them before elections? Okay. But they want to go in an election whereby the results are already known and then before that they begin to sell weapons. I know the billions of US dollars they make from the arms manufacturing companies and the gold and the diamond and the timber they'll be extracting. We are coming back for them. All right. Thank you, uh, Far Elvis. Mr. Tagia Fumekong, you are the uh, Human Rights Watch member representative in Cameroon. All right. So now the looking at the violence and the 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 the, 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 the violation of human rights of civilians in Central Africa Republic, it has been going on for years. It has been going on since independence. It cracked again in 2013 with the civil war. And recently, now this is the uh, uh, second time that the people are supposed to go to the polls for elections after the 2016 elections that led uh, to Fosna uh, Akansu uh, Adera's election of being president presently. How do you see the, the, the holding of these presidential elections tomorrow, despite all the problems and the protests from the rebel faction. Right. Listen, Rita, you talk of the human rights. Mm -hmm. Right from the... I, I would like first to point, to point out, when we talk of human rights, yes. human rights watched by the West. Mm -hmm. Because when you go right to the foundation, I've said this time and time again, we've got to, go, to get back to the declaration mm -hmm. that took place after the Second World War. Because every, every dirt that the West is bringing to Africa came from that time. The declaration was taken with the participation of all the continents apart from Africa. Mm -hmm. We were told that we don't have someone already smart that can stand and bring the views of the culture and of how Africa would like to see the rights respected all over the world. Mm -hmm. While you had already people like Kwame Nkrumah who could have been there. So when you talk of human rights, my point has been always African, we need to stand up now together and get back right to that. Because that's from that declaration that you get the, 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 the United Nations, you got the IMF coming on and saying we are respecting the rights of all the countries mm -hmm. so that we never have it again this kind of cruelty that we got at the Second World War. So let me correct that. The next thing to say is to talk about love. When you talk of love, that's my in the matters of politics, interests are first. France does not love Africans. I would like to point out that again. I was in the plateau in Yaoundé the other time. Uh, the other day, I was uh, honored enough to be with our elder, uh, uh, I see. And it got me this, that I think that it's good that we start knowing what is behind. From the accord that France made with Francophone countries, and that's the base why even in Cameroon, until now, we are suffering this problem. Yeah. Because France wants to hold on the only thing that keeps him among the powerful country in the world, which is Africa. So I want to say something. If France th thinks that we are still in the way like the Frenchman will say, le chien à bois, la caravane passe, I will say that is lie. Mm -hmm. Why will I say this is lie? Afrique Media has been doing a wonderful work and we are going to carry on doing that work. And one thing is sure, they know if Afrique Media was on, they would have never killed Gaddafi as they killed Gaddafi. Sure. So stop thinking, le chien à bois et la caravane passe. I'm going to take this opportunity. Allow me, Rita, to read only the main topics of the 11 accords that France signed oblige the French-speaking countries, the Francophone countries, okay. at the eve of the independence. And you understand why under this, you can have French planes flying over Abidjan as every, they are flying every, now, every you know, hovering over, 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 over Bangui at the moment. Mm -hmm. The first one, we have a debt to pay to France because they support to think that they are the one who taught us how to eat. That's what France believes. Mm -hmm. And that's why I always say, we ourselves, we need to get out of that by starting showing the example that our values, we value our values. Mm -hmm. So France thinks we need to pay a debt. A debt. The colonial debt must be reimbursed by the countries that France colonized. Okay. 
They have the right to confiscate all our financial reserves. That's what our first year were obliged to sign. Because let us not accuse them. They were obliged to sign. As I said, just as at the declaration of the human rights, they obliged others. I remember when, when you go over the text that Chinese specially supported that, no, we cannot do this thing without Africa. Because Africa contributed a lot in the Second World War to bring freedom to, to people. Mm -hmm. But they said there was no one. The third one, let me read it. But we can get details. What I'm saying, I got this text text from someone highly respected, uh, Papa Aisi, we have to understand that France wrote and we signed that we, they have the right to refuse any other intervention in our resources for the exploitation. They have that right. They have that right. Can you imagine that? And we signed that. The fourth one, the priority is given to French companies in every public market that we want to al allocate. And that's why in the case of Cameroon, Cameroon, Mr. B, other people keep on accusing, had to wait months and months while the market was there already ready for one of our famous br bridge, which is the Wuri River Bridge, until France came and took the bridge and gave it to, to Chinese to build. So got this benefit, get out, and Chinese are building the bridge. Mm -hmm. So priority to the French companies. Africans, we need to know that. We need to understand that the problem of Central Africa is not only the problem of Central Africa. Mm -hmm. It's the problem of all the French-speaking countries. The fifth one, they have the exclusive right for any military intervention and to train our military. And this, we can see Ivory Coast is one example in that. They have all that right. They have been implementing. France has the right to release its troops in Central Africa. As he wants. Like in every French-speaking country. They have the right. That's what our first leader signed. That's what Mr. Bia signed. And Mr. Aijo signed. Mm -hmm. uh, and all, all those before. They signed and they will be working on that. That is supposed to end today. And that's why this program of today is very, very important. All over Africa, our millions of viewers, I want you to note that. The seven one, we are obliged to use the French language for all our education. Our children have to go on the French language. I've been suggesting in this plateau, I am not from the fan origin, but I said, if Cameroon could get that fan to, be start, to start be teaching in the primary school today, we may not enjoy that, but until get it to scientific level, mm -hmm. that will be a big, a big deal before. But uh, the point is, are we enough organized to accept that? The obligation to accept the CFA as the only currency, on top of your emphasis, as the only currency, the obligation to send to France. <laughs> Do you, did you know that? Did you know that, Mr. Chu? That you have to send to France the bilan, the end of year bilan, to France. Yes, our patron. Central Africa has said, Twitter has been trying. I don't have the same view as we always think about, you know, the, the Russian and all this, or even in Cameroon, mm -hmm. how Mr. Bia and other countries, how, how they are trying to get some other partners. Because I feel this is the only way. Because in France also, France in the, uh, uh, in the European Union, we have a big asset coming from that side because okay. already you have countries like Italy that are saying publicly and openly that the world is tired of you. Tired of your view to think that you can just get your development exploiting the other countries. So I feel this is the time. The 10 one, you have to denounce any other accord, military accord that you get with another country. If not, France comes like a child, like uh, you know the master and the child, to beat us up. Why did you go to see another country? Any military issue we have to start with france and finally the last one we are obliged french-speaking countries to get with Fr france in any case of a world war like if there was a third world war cameroon just has to go whether he believes in what france is backing up or, or not, not he has just to be behind france enough is enough and we are tired to let France think that Afrique Media is there like Le Chien Bois, La Caravane, Pass. No, we are there and your time is off. You've got to leave Africa do its thing. I'm not going to talk about any other intervention from abroad because it's a game of interest. But France case, because of hypocrisy, we just heard in the report 
that Mr. Macron stood and said he was backing like uh, if he loves so much Central African Republic. We are tired to have these agendas where you have on the table, things are signed, we love Central Africa, we want peace to come back to Central Africa, but the real things is under the table, the hidden agendas. We are tired. We are tired of that. Okay. I think that, that made Thank that you, just thank you, Mr. Former Kong. Let's go now to you, uh, Mr. Eugene Pogwa. You are a Central African, so can you tell us what's your impression about these uh, presidential elections which are to be held tomorrow against all odds? I mean, at this time, I think uh, we have to carry on. And as the two first panelists they exposed the situation of my country, and uh, this is a reality. Uh, for years, France has been uh, the main partner, obligated partner of the CAR. They have done nothing uh, that can help CAR to, to be developed. When uh, President Fadel got elected in, in 2015, uh, he inherited of a very unstable situation. The minister that was there to help him to quench, I mean, the rebellion, to keep the country peaceful, protect uh, the population, I felt uh, it was sometimes that some population were attacked, for example, in Bambari or Bangassou, that the Portuguese special force went there and were able to kick out uh, the rebel. But this country has been occupied for more than 85%. It was not under the control of the, the, the government. So you have rebels that came from different other countries. Some are neighbors, some are far away, West Africa. And very few uh, rebels that are from the CR that was, I can say, hostage of uh, uh, a group of a mob of coming from other place to get diamond and gold. And we know that all these things happened when Bozize uh, assigned with the Chinese regarding oil. And the French have decided that it cannot be that way. And I mean, that's that's what happened. But when we had the election in 2015 and came, nobody was trying to help him. So he tried to get new partner and he chose to go to with, with China, uh, I mean, with Russia. Uh, Russia were the one that sent the uh, trainer for the army, the new army that they're trying to build. There was no way for the CR to defend themselves against all those guys that came with weapons. Some of them have been in uh, war in other countries, even in Iraq or whatsoever, or Libya, and that came over there. And our army was completely disorganized. So it was very important that uh, we could finally have an army, and it will take a while because you cannot train military people even in five years if they don't are not trained the, the, the right way. And uh, this election was, I mean, it is supposed to happen tomorrow, and for some reason the political opposition have decided to derail the election because they want to go to a transition like we did in 2013 and then 2014, and I don't think that's the right way because it didn't produce the, the right result. And the same people that want to go in those transitions are the same people that have deposed François Bozizé in 2013. And it's very funny that today they are aligning themselves with him to try to destabilize completely the government, what the government is at this time. And I think uh, uh, the people of CR are just very tired they are very tired about the situation. They are very tired not to live in peace. They want to be in peace. A lot of people have run away from their place. You have uh, uh, bandits, I mean, mob uh, controlling the, the region. And I think it's the time to be able to, to do so. And derailing the, this process, we just only bring the transition of people that we switch everything to the French, I mean, to France. And it will be a bit repetita. You know, France was there in 2014. They have 2,000 troops on the land of CAR with the Sangaris mission. After the first day, they got two people killed. They stopped to do the mission. They were supposed to bring peace, disarm the people, and finish that rebellion. They didn't do it. Instead, they were involved, giving weapons to Antibalaka, giving weapons to Seleka, putting oil on the fire. And then when the election was organized in 2015, they decided to, be, I mean, to go home and leave the CR with the Miniska, Miniska that were not ready to, to do that mission. And uh, we cannot go back to that situation. I think 
people want to move forward. And myself, presently, I agree. We have to. We have. We have the right to decide with who we can go. It doesn't matter that we work with the Russian today. It doesn't mean that we cannot cooperate with other countries. But the main, uh, the the main focus today is to bring peace on all the complete country. If we take control of all the borders, we establish the authority of the government on all the country. And this election is the reason, as the, my president, uh, my previous panelists say, this is about those agreements that were signed that are caduceous, that nonsense that we have to change today. We African, we have the right to decide for our own well-being. And I think the CR has to move on with that election I would be happy that uh, President Fadel is, uh, was, I mean, is elected because we really need to make that change. And I think this change will impact all the French African countries, French speaking African countries. Thank you. Thank you, Eugene, for uh, that take. I come to you, uh, uh, Fra Elvis. Now, talking of, about peace, what the, the, the people of CAR want is peace, and we equally got Mr. Eugene Pouwa say it and precise it and insist. And it should be noted that the, these people of Central African Republic, the civilians, the youths, have been marching on the streets. Others were calling for uh, an end to all this uh, uh, in civism and uh, for a peaceful presidential and legislative elections in that country. Do you think now what the rebels think, uh, what the rebels are, are requesting for is what the people want? Like we are talking of uh, Francois Bozizé, who is equally the, the leader of the, the Coalition for Change, as he says, for the Coalition of Patriots for Change, they want, they want a, a postponed or postponed presidential elections. They ask, to them, it's what the people want. But we are seeing something else from the people of Central African Republic. What they want is peace, and what they want is a peaceful election. Do you think what the, the coalition wants is what the people want? You know that in any election, mm -hmm. if you want an election to produce uh, an effect which should be positive, heading towards peace, yeah. there should be what we call an even representation at the level of the elections. Mm -hmm. Meaning that the candidates who come forth are supposed to have that representation of the various factions on the ground. The moment you fail to uphold principles of this nature, it means you are heading towards doom. What I said, I don't know those who are advising to Adora, they should listen to us very well. Because as Pan-Africanists, we think that at, during the time of Mobutu, where we had special advisors who were instead white, they should make sure they take Africans to be special advisors. Because an African will be truthful to you more than a colonialist. In this case, what the opposition are saying, they have a point. The same scenario is recorded in Ivory Coast. And I told the officials in Ivory Coast and some officials close to Alassane Ouattara, you don't run an election when you have not engaged into reconciliation, especially after you have passed through conflict where thousands of people have been killed. That's why I told them over there in Ivory Coast that if you want this peace to be long lasting, you are supposed to get Laurent Gbagbo, Charles Blegoudé, and a host of others for a reconciliation party first. By so doing, all of them should now be involved in the electoral process. So that if they fail, they will not at least they were given the chance to come into it. If not, the supporters of Laurent Gbagbo and Blegoudé will always have that idea of wanting to destabilize a current government because they know that they were not part of it. The same scenario is seen in, C, uh, in CAR. Now, in Central African Republic, I don't know who told Faustin that when you keep Francois Bozizé aside, or you accuse him of masterminding a coup d'etat, or you go to sign an accord with Russia, Rwanda, and France, it means you have solved the problem. Chiodora, you have failed. You are supposed to take a move whereby you tell the colonial master who are forcing you to go ahead with the election tomorrow, come rain, come sun, that it will be good if they can even assist you in putting in place a reconciliation policy. That is what Faustin Tuadora was supposed to have, do to have done. 
I was expecting that instead of accusing Francois Bozizé because it's normal. In the African continent, once you are, you are a former president and you want to come back to contest, they start seeing you, they start suspecting you, and they start saying that you are coming can easily bring about a coup d'etat. You don't solve problems in that nature because these are leaders of a political party. And the political parties are still very active on the ground in Central African Republic, just like those of Charles Blake Goudé and Laurent Gbagbo are very active on the ground in Ivory Coast. So the moment they feel excluded as the election is going to go, they will do everything humanly possible to mar the, the peace process in Central African Republic. Doing all this because his uh, candidacy was was rejected. No, Where they are only should, suspecting. You, it should you should equally remember that in 2013 he was president. He was ousted. Yep. By by by, by rebel yeah, leaders, and by, now he yeah. has said that he has formed a coalition with a, collect, a, a collection of other other rebel rebel members. So what proves his own uh, purity or his own uh, 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 genuine attempt for for peace in the country? Well. You know that in any democratic process, if you want to build peace and make it long-lasting, mm -hmm. you must accept the aspect of reconciliation. That is the way forward. You see, France had their own small political turmoil. America has. By the end of it, they will come back to the table and dialogue and move ahead. The important part is that why is Francois Bozizé and the other faction rebels revendicating? For Sten to Adora is supposed to sit down and ask, but do they have a point? If they tell you about marginalization, look at Ethiopia. You look at the rebel faction there. Mm -hmm. What's their issue? They are not fully represented in the government of Ethiopia. And that explains why they are bringing about attacks and is affecting the government machinery. So at the end of it, we think that in cooperative analysis, France should not preach us hypocritic lessons. France is supposed to know that if you are bringing into Edora, you are supposed to tell Chodora, please, sit with Bozizi, sit with the various rebel factions. Let us find out how we can agree. If they are agreeing, Faustin can still be accepted by the rebels and Bozizi, but they agree on a power-sharing deal. Maybe Bozizi takes this, and then the vice presidentship goes to the rebel factions, whereby they could accept them to bring about a percentage of persons in the government. These things are processes when it comes to do with peace. But on the other hand, I am very surprised because Macron sits there and is blowing drama. I talk about how he has sent aircrafts and his habit of the aircraft he has sent. And I'm surprised Russia being in will not work there for free. All of them have a shady deal at the background. Seeing that you don't have money, we will come in with our troops, we we'll defend you. In exchange, you give us this quantity of gold, this quantity of diamond, we explore for this number of period of time. You give us timber, what this amount. You give us um, fuel, petrol, we we'll exploit what this amount. Those are the shady deals that go on between incumbent and the colonial past. And so at the end of it, Rita, we should be calling a spade a spade. Of course, my brother from the Central African Republic in Europe, to him, actually, there should be peace. We all want peace to go. But now, in political sciences, you cannot take a second step and expect a result that would have been produced by the first step taken. It cannot go. So the moment Chadora is taking the wrong step, by not dialoguing first with the rebels, and not ensuring one accord agreement before going for the election, it means that Chadora only wants the peacekeeping force to stay there for long as long as they can stay. And you know when foreign powers stay on, in, on, 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 in their soil, the territorial boundary, you know that there are some terms that people agree with because of the security they are given to you. You stand at the losing power because anything they propose to you, you will easily accept because if they are not there, your government will not be too stable. We understand the army in Central African Republic is fragile. But I think that would have taken different methods to have an accord with Russia or France and not forging in for election less than 24 hours when you are not bringing in Bozizi, you are not agreeing with the rebel factions who have a say as far as Central African politics is concerned. It means you are excluding them and you want to use military power to subject them. Now come to think of it, in the black market, this same Russia, this same France will go behind and sell them weapons who will come back to continue fighting the government of Faustin. And at the end of it, as the instability is going on, you realize that the timber, the gold, the diamond will be exploited by these rebel colonialists who are coming in and disguising the name of peace. When they know what they're supposed to do and they want to take advantage of the fragile nature of South Africa, okay. Faustin 
to Adere. I am begging you as a Pan Africanist, do us a lot of good by dialoguing with Francis Bozizi and the other rebel factions because they are sons and daughters of Central African Republic. At the same time, for El Vizdi, remember uh, almost two years ago, there was a peace treaty or a peace agreement that was signed with the rebel faction. And this is barely less than two years, and they still break the, the, the agreement. Yes. So how can you uh, blame the incumbent for not for, no, for, for what for you not can do is that see, listen, on a peace accord? When you engage a peace accord, and it is broken. It means that along the line something went wrong. You cannot sign a peace accord with me, and then along the line I break it when something is not wrong. That is why there are methods and mechanisms put in place for conflict resolution. Hmm. The first thing is. Who were the parties who were present to watch mm -hmm. the peace accord? Mm -hmm. If you take me to Yaoundé like the fake national dialogue that Cameroon had in the name of resolving anglophone crisis, and you bring the people who are not well represented in it, you will see that I could, I could sign on that duress. If I come out, I realize the thing is not moving, I have every reason to revendicate. Therefore, the terms of the agreement, the scenario, the environment, the principles were not well funded. Because in a well-funded uh, ground for reconciliation, you will not see it breaking as it's pain. Okay. That's what I would have expected to Adora if they were signed that deal. They would have looked at, they would have asked even the rebel factions, who do you think can also represent us here as an eyewitness? Probably some members of the African Union, even the African Union has died. Some uh, well-known former presidents who have reputation on the African continent, you bring them in. By so doing, it will be more of a guarantee that if I want to break it, they themselves will come into order, but please, I thought we agreed like this. Okay. So something is not going right because France is influencing the policies. Mm -hmm. So what was agreed upon, from every indication, if I analyze in terms of political analysis, means that something went wrong. That's why the rebels, the rebels themselves, break that peace deal. And it was for Tuadora to go back to the table to find out what went wrong and not to claim to bring foreigners because you want to claim military might and force your way through and they come and be backing you. How okay. long will Russia and Frank stay on. And the more they stay on, we'll be sorry for the resources they will be stealing. I mean, not taking. They will be stealing to compensate their stay on the African soil in the name of peacekeeping forces. Okay, we shall be coming back to that. I'll come to you, Mr. Fumeko. Yes, What's I'm, your impression I'm about... Very, uh, <laughs> I'm very impressed by the development of my uh, colleague on the panel. But I'd like to say something. Yeah. Let us not talk about the African problems or our difficulties. Like uh, it's just like a, you know, it's a cake. You know, you can arrange and it goes like this, works like this. Just simple. Things are not as simple. I would I'd like maybe to introduce by saying, if you were like to take two people, Mr. Macron cannot rule. Like, cannot rule Cameroon. He cannot rule even an African country. These are countries with extreme constraints. Because to rule a land, you've got so many constraints. You've got to make sure that we understand and make sure that our people understand. That's why I always talk of education first. Because who are these rebels? Who are the rebels? You know, these are guys that they wake up one morning, they can just break anything like they, they, like they want. Mm -hmm. That's why I like the way he talks about he knows that the, 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 the country uh, stability is still very fragile or the army is fragile. Mm -hmm. Something that Mr. Tuadera did that for me I admire a lot was to, to, to bring Russians to train his own army. The hopes, the hopes of all now in SCAR now, the hopes are that the authority of the government comes back. Who is the, pres the president at the moment? Is Tuadera. Yeah. Who is Bozize? Bozize is le leading what is called Kwanaka. And maybe Kwanaka, uh, our brother from Central Africa, is going to correct if I don't know how to pronounce mm -hmm. it well. You know, KNK. K K. And what is that really behind? International, they give the impression this is the coalition of the opposition parties. In fact, if you look at it well, and I like him really to explain that better, when I went through it and go through it again, it's just like in other African countries, these are kind of tribalistic meetings yeah. where you have again the tribal tendency that, that are taking over. So we need to understand what the work Tuadera has been doing. He's just been starting to bring stability back to that country. And I really admire that. Mostly allowing Russians to train a national military. military. This is very important. It is fragile. Let us not come and think that in one day that man can do it. I'm not here to support. I'm not here to really like do the campaign or one of one or another. Mm -hmm. But when you go through the story of Bozize, 
I don't really see it as, you know, this is an angel that he has been listening to him. Second thing that I would like to say, Mr. Bozize is under an international crim criminal, uh, criminal court warrant. This is the main reason that Mrs. Daniela Datlan, which, which is the president of the, uh, of the constitutional court, used to say, you cannot be a candidate. Yeah. We need to consider these things. We need to understand in our African settings, not have hopes or bring hopes that cannot work. We need to be factual. We need to be practical. So what I am saying, again, without doing the campaign of one or another, is to say, looking at the interests of the people, not the interest of individuals. Yeah. So I'm not talking here of Twadera as an individual. Because in fact, these people represent a moral vision for the country of Ka. Sure. And that's what I'm saying. And at the same time, we need to make sure that we understand also that uh, uh, the, 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 the kind of peace that, that uh, Afri Central African Re Republic has been living for some time is that all those who are concerned, I'm talking here for France, Russia, Rwanda, Europe in general, everyone has understood, even included France also. Because France has started understanding that we will not exploit these people as much as you want if there's so much instability. Mm -hmm. Because that's the main issue of France. The interest of France is to exploit. Whether you die, thousands and all, but all have now come down to understand that. Now, let us not think during these few years that they had some kind of, of, of stability. It's just because MINUSCA was so powerful or whatever. No, it is that even locally, you, when you go and interview the Central African people, you read in their reaction that these guys are tired of this kind sure. of life. They are looking for peace. So let us not go back to put again fire on things that can bring, you know, can, 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 can destroy can again. their dreams for their peace. Their dreams someday. again for peace. That's what I want to say. Because really, it is not Bozize, it is not Tuarela saying to Bozize, you cannot be part of this now. You, mm -hmm. you, you have an international court. That's putting him aside. There's a lady that everyone is respecting in this environment. That lady, Madame D Daniela Datlan, has really brought on some kind of, uh, uh, a kind of stability and among all, all the all all those who are intervening in that country at the moment, so I would like us really to look at it, not again pointing fingers or bringing up interest, individual interest, mm -hmm. but bringing the interest of this, you know, average five million people who are tired, who are tired, who want to see the something in a, really a, 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 an emergence in an emergent country in that part of Africa, and I still think that that part of Africa is very. The Central African Republic is really a good example for the whole Africa. And let us stand all together to fight against this agreement, this accord that were against African uh, African countries. Right. countries. That's my own view of the thing. As I said, Thank you. I'm not there to support one or another one. Sure, we are not here to do any support for any no. person. Mm -hmm. But uh, the essence is to bring out what's going to help the people of Africa and going to bring out solution for their various problems. Let's take uh, uh, you, Mr. Eugene Pehoa. Now, you've been listening to what uh, Elvis has said and Mr. Tagia Fumekong. And what's your own impression now about the achievements made by President Akash Tuadera and his efforts, his, 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 his struggles, his efforts towards uh, uh, bringing peace and reconciliation to the country? I mean, what he inherited from the country was a tough situation, but I have to get back to some of the thing that uh, has been said you know uh, for years now it's not the first time that uh, CAR uh, by the way is Kwanakwa that's right that's the way to pronounce the name uh, we have government of national union many 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 times it never solved any problem in our country and most of African countries never never ever the other thing is we need in Africa now uh, to be able to, to respect law. We cannot let people take weapons all the time. And because they have weapons and we let them do what they want to do, every time that they go and take weapons, it will be like that. It will be like a, a cycle, a vicious cycle. They will take weapons to bring back to the table of negotiation all the time. If we don't stop that uh, cycle, uh, the CIA will never, ever find peace. That, that, that won't happen. Like... Uh, my previous panelist said, uh, Bozize is not supposed to run for president. He is under uh, a warrant from the United Nations, and he has committed a lot of crimes in CAR. So we have to know that. 
the Kwanakwa is a party. If Bozizé cannot run, he could have put somebody else. That's, 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 that's an excuse, okay? He has been brought back here. Some people are giving weapons to those guys. Suddenly, they have weapons. They went to Khartoum. All those people went to Khartoum. They signed an agreement. They never respected any part of that agreement. They're always attacking civilians, killing people here and here. So and we cannot put that on the government. That's not possible. They were never given position. Some of those, those guys are not from CR. And they are running part of the region of CR like it's their own country. I, I, I'm, I'm not the war person, you know, and I'm not a, a, a Tuatera uh, uh, supporter. But we have to see the fact. We have to stop that nonsense. When it was World War II, if I remember, if it was not the Soviet Union and the USA, I don't think Europe would have been free today. So it was because of the help of other that, I mean, the world was freed from Hitler. And the CR today, we have been prisoner for, for years now. This is a country since colonization time that was in a certain way sacrificed by the power of France because the CR people were used as uh, forced labor. They have to produce coffee, I mean, cocoa, I mean, different things, uh, rubber. And you have to bring a quantity. If you don't meet that quantity, you can be beaten to death. And they didn't spend a lot of money for school or education. And I remember, I mean, times of our father, very few could go after elementary school. They could go one year after elementary school and they have to stop right there. Some have, can, could go to troisième, like the middle school, what they call middle school. And very few could continue to finish high school. And for that, they have to travel to Brazzaville, then go to France to be educated. Mm -hmm. And we have that. So the people have not been trained. Unfortunately, when Bukasa came, they didn't do, we didn't do our part to build school and to improve the system for, for education. And today we're paying the price. And we have a problem of leadership for years and years and years. And now we have Tuadera that came in power trying to trying to, to bring C R in the, I mean in the in, in I mean in the among the other nations as a normal nation. But we cannot do it by ourselves. This is the truth. And it's true as uh, uh, the other gentleman was saying, France or Russia, there is a cost for that. Mm -hmm. There's a cost for that, but we have to pay the cost. We have to pay the price to be able to bring peace. And I don't think that bringing those people back and forth, we have, I am pan Africanist too. I don't believe that those people come to a peace. First of all, we have to separate who are on the ground. All those soldiers that came from uh, other countries, Niger or, or Sudan or, or, or or Chad, or other country, they cannot be there. Nigeria, even some guys from Nigeria, they're over there. They don't even speak the language of the country. They don't belong to those countries, to my country. They have to go back. If you do that, then we can speak among ourselves, the CR people. This is totally different. But the government doesn't have that power, that strength to be able to fight them because that's like proxy war. Some people are giving them weapons. We don't make weapons in CR. And as long as those people receive weapons, we have been there and told this thing that started during the week. Those people have brand new pickup Toyota going down with weapons, new weapons. And this is not, it didn't come from the sky. And of course, we have seen, and we're talking about Russia, we have seen what Russia has done in the past. Okay. They've been in Vietnam which, to assist Vietnam, but they left. They've been to Cuba, they left. They've been to Angola, they left. They've been to Syria, and they will leave. And they've been, for example, to Venezuela. They have done that before. It's not mm -hmm. the first time. It's not a nation that stay mm -hmm. in your country and stay for that. And somebody has to pay for it. It's, like, it don't, it's not like we don't have the meat. This is one of the richest country in Africa and in the world. Even if we don't get to our resources, and our resources are going you know, with no order at all because we have rebels that can take the plane that land inside the country, take gold and diamond. We need to bring back the border of CAR. And the price is we have to pay whoever help us. And Rwanda is one of those countries. Some countries like Portugal have sent regular troops beside the one that's working in the UN. The Rwanda have done the same thing. You have countries like Angola. We need to bring peace in our country. If we don't, 
we won't be able, you can do every, I mean, any government or national union, it's not going to work. Because what happened is all those people get there, they just care about their stomach, they get there about their pocket, and they don't care about the people. The people need school, the people need hospital, the people need housing, the people need, okay. I mean, to eat. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have, we have people that are having, suffering from starvation, and we have to stop that. I think that we have to stop that. And I don't think just postponing uh, the election in the so-called name of uh, peace. We won't get peace because we postpone the election. It's not going to happen. It has been going on for too long now. This crisis didn't start in 2013. It started way back over there, early 2000, when Bozizé took over and brought people from Chad in the CR, in the army, in everything to control the country. You don't control a country with people from foreign country like that. You have to have your own army. He was the one that put his own army there because he was, he was so scared about, uh, I mean, a coup. He deposed a lot of the, of the people from the army and rely on army from Chad. And it cannot happen this way. He cannot come back just like that. He has blood on his hand and he cannot just come and think that he can run for president. He should have stepped aside, take somebody from his party to run, and that's it. He has been brought, and I think that's the plan. He was the only one that can give a hard time to Tradera for the next election, and the plan was to destabilize, has to do with the geopolitical interests of France, and the fact that Russia is in CR, and he has been brought to create that situation. And when we see even people that were against him, they were against him in 2012 and work against him to be deposed working with him today this is not this is not right something is wrong this is totally Machiav machiavellism and we have to change that the CR cannot continue that way myself i really think that's my position i really think that the only way to get back to normal we need to get the rid of those rebels out of the CR, and it has to be done because if we don't do that now. We don't work to make it happen. The next 20, 30 years, that country will disappear. And let's remember that a part of those rebels wanted to cut off the country and create another nation. We cannot afford to do that. We need to do that. And we have to go and get every means that is possible to make it happen. The CR people have suffered for too long. That's my take on yeah. that, that situation. Still, we cannot accept that. Yeah, I still, I still stay with you. I would like to know exactly what you think about uh, the, the peace agreement that was signed between uh, the rebel leaders and the government some two years back. What do you think about it and why it actually failed? Are you of the same uh, point of view like Mr. Far Elvis that certainly certain conditions were not met, giving the rebel faction more reasons to come back with their attacks and their violence? I mean, even on this uh, agreement that was signed in Khartoum, I mean, uh, the CR government were not in position of uh, of force. So they have, in a certain way, they have accepted things that they were not supposed to accept. We were not, it was not even right to sit the president of a country with rebel groups. That's my point of view. That's it's not possible. You never, you never seen that anywhere but Africa. You take, because sometimes we criticize the, the West, but did you see the West talking with rebels? Did you see the West uh, accepting to sit at their own table? you never seen that before. They always, they never negotiate with rebels. They never negotiate with terrorists. They never negotiate with people who attack the country. But when it comes to Africa, we accept any kind of nonsense. And this argument, I think Trudeau was forced in a certain way because he has no power. He doesn't have an army that can fight the war. So I think for him, it was the way to probably to buy time, to buy time to get stronger. And, and, and maybe one day to change uh, what's going on over there. And everything that we decide at that, uh, uh, I mean, in, that, uh, in, in, in Khartoum, for me, it was not right for the CR. I mean, it would have not benefited our country because we were accepting to leave foreigners from other countries continue to occupy our nation, killing our people, rape the woman, and many other kind of stuff, and stealing uh, the, 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 the ground of our country, and do that and go it, I mean, with that in other country. And we, I mean, as a CR person, I didn't like that argument. But 
is the truth that at the time the government probably they didn't have another choice and they have to go because all the partners were pressing for that uh, agreement from the different uh, country, United Nations, I mean, Africa Union, everybody was pressing for that, thinking that that would be the solution. But uh, I don't think it would be a solution. Uh, this argument uh, is no more uh, valid because they all, I mean, many, many, many times violate that, that agreement. And I think we need to get something different. And if he has to go through what I say, we have to go through, let's go. Because we cannot, I'm telling you, the people will continue to die. It doesn't matter that we have a uh, government of uh, a national union. Those people are not working for the interest of the CAR, not at all. So we need to find people that become more conscious and understand as a leader what their role is towards the population that they want to lead. Thank you. This is uh, the Pan-African debate on your Pan-African television bringing to you political matters and issues concerning the African continent, giving uh, the opportunity for you to use the numbers that appear on your screen to give us your participation, to give us your view and your take regarding the topics that are tabled for you. So uh, we'll be expecting your course and your participation in the course of the program. The lines are already opened as of now, equally with the participation and the analysis of uh, the panelists that we have in the studio. We are trying to understand the political situation of Central Africa Republic, a country that has been, that is strife torn since independence that's over 60 years and uh, we should note that since 2013 it has equally been hit by a civil war that has left uh, about uh, three quarter of uh, or over over a quarter of the civilians being refugees in neighboring countries and the mineral nation which is supposed to be one of the richest is actually suffering from so much poverty and uh, and uh, insecurity what's your own take regarding the situation in central africa republic now that the country is still facing rebel violence and the people are to go to the polls tomorrow to vote for a new president and the members of the National Assembly. Your own take regarding this is what we are expecting to hear from you. So I come to you now, uh, Far Elvis. We have been looking at all of all, all the happenings in Central Africa. Now, we uh, there, there is uh, the situation where a, a, a viewer from uh, uh, on our Facebook page is accusing the United Nations of sending uh, uh, peacekeepers of, of 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 sending assistance to Central Africa Republic constantly and choosing to do it. They don't understand why. Whereas it is it is just calling for ceasefire in other nations that need more assistance than Central Africa Republic. Are you of the same opinion with Mr. Mbanye Lucas? Yes, you know, I said from the uh, beginning of this uh, program mm -hmm. that when you find many countries, foreign countries, congregating within a particular country, there's a point of interest. Mm. And I said that no one should pretend to love your home more than you, more than you do. Yeah. Um, international politics is an issue of interest. And of course, when it comes to international relations at the same time and diplomacy, Interest is at the center of all the transactions, whether we like it or not. Um, that's why sometimes I'm not very comfortable with Macron's statement when he's talking about, uh, like, it is their duty to maintain peace. He talks sometimes as if France loves Central African Republic more than the Central Africans themselves, mm -hmm. which is not true. Mm -hmm. Now, as I said earlier, in most of diplomatic transactions, we have the surface details and the underground details. Surface details will tell you that, all right, if we do this, probably we could exchange this and that. Maybe uh, they'll tell you the amount of money that you could chip in for them to assist you around the, the, the peace process, and especially during your, concerning your contribution as a member state to the state organization. Mm -hmm. Now, there is another, uh, what we call agreement on the ground, which that one they don't tell you because that one goes with other what we call fringe benefits. If you permit us come in, we could give you a quarter in France. If you permit us come in, we could give you three hospitals closer to Elysee as a gift for you. But now, what we have to understand is that all those things that France will give to you or Russia will give to you, Russia is not a philanthropic organization. 
where they just sit, they come and train Central African military for nothing and go back like that. Of course, they're incurring cost. They have to incur, take charge of even the, uh, what we call risk allowances of most of the soldiers who are leaving their relatives back in Russia to come and stay there as long as they can in, in, in Central African Republic. So this one, now we call that underground discussions. This one I never made known when it has to do with political accountability. Now, most states, they hide this one because it goes with a lot of strings attached to it. That's why if you look at it, when uh, Chisekedi took over, realized that there was a rift between him, France, and uh, China. Of course, he was pressing hard to bring in China, while Kabila was pressing on to stay with France for other business deals. Mm -hmm. By the end of it, you get to realize that there were other underground issues. If you allow me to come in, away from what I can do for the country, this is your own personal benefit. This is already aside. If you like, we'll give you right now. So these are the things that come in that most persons who do diplomacy don't give out this part, this part of it. They will tell you the other part of the diplomacy, which is sweet, but they will not tell you that in diplomacy, diplomacy is one of the most dirty deals in terms of negotiations and transactions on this planet Earth. I mean, one of the most shady deals that takes place is other diplomacy. Now, if you look at it, for those who are, are like the, 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 the person who just uh, wrote on our Facebook page, you know, mm -hmm. the question now is, as I said, if you look at it, Cameroon, for example, has been going through, we, we no longer quantify the number of people who have been killed. Today in Tuba, we know that a person, a patient was pulled out of the hospital in Bamenda, no one's region, and was killed. The same bike rider that carried that same patient too was equally killed by security forces, as they say on the ground. Now, we have counter -accus -accus accusations equal on the side of the non-state armed actors, and what is happening? Civilians are caught in the crossfire, and more lives are lost on the part of civilians on the part of the military, on the part of the separatist fighters. If you come to Central African Republic, you realize that with the action put in place by the Seleka and the Baleka rebels, I first asked the people, yeah. before France and Russia is coming in with Rwanda, where are they having their weapons from? You, you cannot tell me that France that has all the intelligence unit cannot track that the black market, the route through which these weapons are coming in. If you go through, the Seleka and the Baleka rebels have Skalasnikov. Skalasnikov originally comes from Russia. Yeah. They have their AK-47, they have their long-range missiles, just like Mr. Eugene was saying, most of them even have brand new vehicles, pickups, and they have the uh, bombs that they can detonate at any marketplace that they, they so choose. And so at the end of it, where is their funding coming from? Therefore, you realize that the Western, the West, when they come to African countries, they come with double in intentions. They are pretending to solve a problem when they are at the same time creating the problem. Mm -hmm. You cannot tell me that France's wish is to see Central Africa Republic stay in peace. No. They are probably that they want to see the both factions at loggerheads so that they cannot take advantage because when they are loggerheads, because the army in Central Africa Republic is weak, therefore they cannot fully have a custom check border that can surround the country to check out what is coming in and what is going out. Yeah. Of course, we had evidence of when they were carrying out looting, we know that it was a helicopter that was stationed around the gold mines, not east of Bangui, that was specialized in carrying things that people could, don't even know. And from time to time, will carry in the helicopter and move over. Now, if you look at it controversially, like what the, uh, the, the panelist or the, the, the contributor just said, yeah. you begin to ask the question, if France comes in, Russia comes in, it is true, we all want peace. The question is, under what parameters are they coming in? You remember that in Mali, the northern area where the French, French military base is stationed, the Malian National Army is not allowed to hover closer to it in terms of their military. So, you decide the Malian military air force cannot hover closer to where the French military base is placed. You can imagine in your country you have limitations. So, this is the same thing we have here. Now, my point here is that they are coming, but the consequences will, will, will suffer as Central Africans will be more mm -hmm. than the help they are giving us. And when they come into it, it is true. Just like what uh, my brother said, Mr. Eugene, uh, or, my, or my, my, the human rights uh, uh, right, uh, watch uh, official here, it is true. The Russians come in to train the uh, Central African army because they, were, they, are, they are fragile. It is true. But what we're asking is, what are the other things attached to it? There is no free gift in diplomacy. They will train you in one way. On the other hand, there are some extras of things that I set diplomacy under the table. Mm -hmm. which I will not tell you, which you must have to compensate because there's no government that will have a well-funded army, you beg for them to come and trade, to come and do it for free. They are not Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. So if you look at what the uh, panelists or one of the contributors just said, there is an interest in Central Africa. Imagine a small nation 
with only above 4 million persons. But it's attracting peacekeeping troops from UN, from France, and from Russia. You can, I mean, 4 million persons and above are enjoying the sovereignty of Central African Republic. But when you find these hoodlums moving towards Central African Republic, we should not think that it's because they want to help us because the question we should ask them is where are the Seleka and the Baleka Arabians getting their weapons from? Mm -hmm. If you go to Libya, you realize that Saudi Arabia is backing them up. Russia is backing them up. France is backing them up. We have more than five foreign countries that are backing the various factions. And they all have weapons. That's why the, the, the peace process in Libya is far from ending. So yeah. in the same case with Central Africa, if these guys come in to help them, that's why I said, in my own point of view, I would have loved Russia. I would have loved France. I would have loved UN to come in more at the level of reconciling whatever factions they have. It is true that Eugene said some of those who were fighting rebels, maybe other Bozizi, were foreigners. But that is what we're supposed to talk on the table. If we have a peace, a, a peace conference, these points are supposed to come on the table. The commander who commanded the area, for example, in Kembe, or in Dele, or in Gambula, was, from, was not a national from Central African Republic. Mm -hmm. Once we are able to ascertain this evidence, that another commander who headed the area in Cabo, or the one who was in Alindua, all of them in these areas where we're fighting were not from Central African origin, it's only a good point for us to kick them off the rail in a peace deal conference. But the moment we're unable to arrive at this, and we move to Khartoum, and few months after the war escalates, it means that there are invisible hands behind this war. Because you cannot sustain a war if you don't have weapons. You cannot sustain a war if you don't have finance. That's why Boko Haram, they have brand new helocs. They have sophisticated weapons that even Nigerian army grouped together with Chad and even Cameroon. They don't have. Why do they have all this understanding the, the war? Because there's an invisible hand behind, pretending to assist them in training the military wise to combat Boko Haram, and then going behind, assist sponsor this very Boko Haram to come in and bring about instability so that they loot our natural resources and move away. That's why I say that as a Pan-Africanist, the move put in place by them, I am not refusing. Chuadora is on board. He's the president. I know you will win tomorrow. That one, I'm not arguing with it because I see the, 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 the issues on the ground. But my main worry here is that we must be able to back up now Chuadora. Because at the end of it, if Bozizi wants to come in, Chadora is fighting. And my problem here is the poor, the poor civilians, the young guys, the women, and the gay child who will be going through rape and poverty there in Central Africa. That's where my focus is. So I think that while we are moving on, because these guys have an, a focus, we should be thinking of what to do to ensure that after tomorrow's election, there should be what we call a national reconciliation. I would, because it's already late, appeal on President Faustin to Adora. And after winning your elections tomorrow, do us a, a, a favor by bringing in these key members of the various factions into a unity government. Yeah. If they come in, it's very obvious that, because for me, if you have an enemy, you bring him into the house, you can easily monitor him that when he's away from you. Mm -hmm. If Bozizi comes in and is made probably, uh, say, uh, Minister of Local Affairs or Minister of Digitalization, and they give him the military to, to guard him and work with him. It will be difficult for him to plot the coup because at that time, we have state security surveying his move. If we bring the other members of the other factions and put them into government positions, I think that's the only way forward because that is only late to say we must bring in and we could postpone the election. But what I think is that communication should be the watchword at the level of Bangui. Mm -hmm. To Adora should be able to let people know that after the elections, there should be a national government or a unity government which must encompass Bozizi. If that time comes and we are bringing Bozizi in and the other forces and they refuse to come in, then we will know that they mean something else than that very peace that we need in Central African Republic. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Fire Visa. Mr. Tagia Fumeko. All right. I would like to know uh, uh, from you. The uh, rebel faction had called for a 72 hours tru truce to, 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 to carry out a ceasefire for 72 hours. And uh, during this period, Three uh, UN officials were killed. The government of Central Africa Republic has actually blamed the rebel factions for not respecting their words. And this has also prompted many uh, 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 pundits to think that this rebel faction is not to be trusted at a point when they call for a ceasefire and they attack UN forces 
knowing that members of the United Nations or me members of a, a, a peacekeeping force are not supposed to be tampered with, how do you look at this attack on UN forces by these rebel factions who are seeking for, for, for justice or for peace for the civilians of Central Africa? Right, uh, Rita, to answer this kind of question, I'd like mm -hmm. to say something. We are working here not on angel ground, angel's ground. Mm -hmm. We need to look at the things in, in a more practical way. Sure. That, that's what I really uh, believe. Sure. Um, now, rebels, you know, are still, like in Cameroon at the time, uh, the government calls, uh, talks about rebels, terrorism, and all this, but that issue progressed until the government understood, although at the dialogue, the national dialogue, not everybody was present, but we need to understand we are with working with women beings and be more practical. What am I trying to say? Uh, what even us at the level of uh, the medias or the television, we have to stop making elections like an end. Because that's really the difference between us and these countries out there that are looking for a better way for the population. Mm -hmm. Russia is where? thousand kilometers away. France, thousand kilometers away and they are all there. We need to remove that. Say we have to. It's a matter of education, even of people. Because the youths are there, whether among the rebels and all, mm -hmm. thinking that the elections, this is an end. If elections go, go on the way I want, I will become a multimillionaire or whatever. I will be rich and all this. We need to stop these things. Man. Elections are just a means. Now, industries and organization of the government and ministries, you know, uh, having a what we call in uh, in the French language, cahier de charge, put on to see how the emergency will come. This is the most important. So, mm -hmm. so elections are not an end. We need to remove and educate the people all over Africa about that. Now, the second thing I will say, the second, the second thing I say, the mistake is not to understand what is division. Mm -hmm. Right from the biblical time, Division is the main, the main weapon to terminate you. The word terminate, I think, is the best word. Mm -hmm. To terminate the people. You put on division, it will go left, right, in all what we say, in, down to the sounds. In the, you know, in the French speaking language, down to the sounds. You know, down to the sounds, you wake up one morning, as in Cameroon, we had fire in an hospital. And I remember when I came, I was invited in your plateau. I don't know who was aching up. And people talking, no, this is this, 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 the fault of the government. No, this is the fault of the military. This is the fault of Ambazonians. I sat and I asked, whether it's the fault of the military or the Ambazonians, can you imagine yeah. human beings going to put fire in, in an hospital? hospital? That's the first thing. Mm -hmm. So we need to avoid all kind of things that bring, on to, that bring us up to remain in division. That's why, you know, I said I'm not here to do the campaign of Tuadera, but at least you have a, what is called something looks like stability coming on. Let us help him in that because right from the beginning in the case of Cameroon, I said the first mistake was not to dialogue with the teachers that went and the lawyers that went. That was the worst right from the beginning. Never mm -hmm. allow anything that can bring division. Because the next thing to happen, you cannot even master it. We are talking here, you are asking me uh, two, two, two from the, you know, from the minuscule were killed and all. And you, I cannot answer this thing. For me, it's really, you know, the one of the, this kind of thing will always happen as soon as you open the door to division. In the case of Cameroon, you have people ca getting in school, getting our girls naked, walking outside. And this, this, this kind of thing, come on, why? Because you have people, when you talk of rebel, who is a rebel? Mm -hmm. A rebel can be coming from Sudan, from Mali, from even, not even from within. Or it can come from within as well. So let us not be wasting time on saying it's not from Central Africa. For me, I don't believe on that. I am really don't believe on that. Yeah. You take, you take Avri Coast. Mr. Ouattara is not even an Avorian. He's not an Avorian. And many in his government are not even uh, Ivorian from the beginning. So for me, this is not the matter. We need to look at all the way. I talk like a militant of the human right to say peace is the first thing. Mm -hmm. Even if it does not, even if it's just holding on some light issue, let us hold this light issue and keep this issue. So that's why I'm that way really I'm going to learn. You see, in the case of Cameroon, Cameroon for many years had been taken as an example of peace and stability. Is that right or not? Yeah. Is that right or not? It is. But that peace was standing on lies. That was standing on lies. A cause that took place in this country, in Cameroon, in 1961, were not respected. 
And for too long, Mr. Beard, that even people accused, he came and found that already, that Aijo was already working on. He just said, let me just keep that piece on that way. Even though the base were lies, but at least there was a kind of peace that was going on. Mm -hmm. Now, since that time, that the, 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 the lawyers work, and Mr. Beard himself, he didn't understand that the best way was just to dialogue and find a way to keep on all. But now, when on thinking that bringing the army is going to settle the issue, that I think many Cameroonians thought about that also. That with the power of the army, the next day this thing is going to cease. What happened? Division has, has started taking place, yeah. taking root. And biblically, from the moment you open to division, you are opening to this destruction for the good and the bad one. So all are going to be to be paying the price of all that. That's why I say. Even if the base of that stability is light, you have some light assets that help to, to, to keep the stability, let us hold on that and get on. That's why I'm saying, Mr. Tuadera, I'm not there to support, but I say he has seen some ways like building gradually the National Army to bring what? Because the hope of everyone in Africa and in Central African Republic is to bring back the authority of the government. Whether it's with Tuadera or mm. the next president coming, or, or whoever, the interest, the most important is to bring the authority of the government. So that in the case of Cameroon, at once also I said in the case of Cameroon, you cannot fight against the government and win. You know, although we know all the lacks and all the undo that we have with the government, that I tried to explain from the beginning, that government is not free. Just like in all these French-speaking countries, that government is not free. That's why, again, I said, if you have to take Mr. Macron without thinking about the color of the skin and all this, and take Mr. Bia, Mr. Bia will rule very well France. Because they don't have, he doesn't have so many constraints that you have. He rules his country, he puts things right on, but you in Cameroon, you need to take care first of the interests of the France. Mm -hmm. You need to, to, to look at, so let, not, not, let us not dream. You know, politics is, has nothing to do with uh, wonderful emotional emotional thinking and all. It's got to do with realities and interest. And that's why also I say, and once I share that with Mr. German, who is I just heard again from Vision Guy, he opened his own party in Cameroon, so one of the political leaders who was uh, in the side of Kamto. I told him about this issue of practicability. You've got to be practical. I said to him, Guy, I went through your program of the MRC, wonderful program, but you are not practical. It's a dream. It's mm. emotions. Politics has nothing to do with dreams and emotion. And I learned by this, in the case of Cameroon again, that is to compare to Tuadora, for example, the Minister of Territorial Administration, he quoted something that I love a lot. He quoted the Bible. And that what has been lacking to Cameroonians, that we need to understand. He quoted so rightly. The man said, the Bible says, you've got to respect the authorities in power. People will stand and say whatever. The Bible go get deeper. In the book of Peter to say, even the wicked authority, you need to respect them. Because God is the one who put them. As long as we don't understand this thing, we come and bring with emotion, dream to people, tell them, do this, do this, and people are dying on the field. So in the case, to go back to car, <laughs> what this man has tried to put on, and that he has been trying to put on, even if it is light, if it is fragile, even though, even though it is not so strong, let us support him to get ahead of that, and at last, we can see that country testing because anything that will be on division will open the door, especially to that wicked country called France to exploit what has been wanted. We need to start in Africa building our blocks to be one, to understand in Cameroon, Mr. Bia is our brother. Mr. This is our brother. In Central Africa, you guys understand whether it's Tuadera or whether it's Bozize or whoever is first your brother. Anything out from them is not your brother. He doesn't have your interest in hand. He has his own interest. I need to stand and say that, know that we are in our block. Mm -hmm. We need to look at the best for us as people, not individuals. Because we stop talking about, about, talking about Bozize as an individual who is coming from God, as an angel, or talking about Tuadera as an angel coming from God. No. Looking at our interest as a block and our populations, our young ones who have been looking, watching, what can they do for us? That's where I would like to land. All right. Thank you, Mr. Tadia. Thank you for that take. I come to you now, uh, Eugene. Eugene Pevoa. So l let's look at now the the position of uh, these uh, of, uh, of the government in the face of this rebel coalition. We see uh, the coalition was actually formed on December 19th in order to 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 form a reprisal 
and the protest against the, the organization of tomorrow's presidential election. And now, uh, uh, by witness, the court on a ceasefire, a 72-hour ceasefire, not to, to, to act, looking, expecting the government to equally respect the ceasefire. And within the course of the ceasefire, they were still uh, carrying out the uh, atrocities. Now, how do you, then they, they put it in their own term, they say the blame, the, 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 the breaking of their 72-hour ceasefire on the irresponsible stubbornness of the government to suspend Sunday's election. How do you appreciate these uh, 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 statements by the rebel faction and the audacity of their gestures? I mean, this is very funny. You attack the government. And I'm not over there, so we don't have all the elements, but mm. uh, my impression on this one, I think when they have attacked the government and they met, uh, uh, I can say, uh, resistance and probably suffer a lot of loss uh, because of that, they decide to, to call for a three days uh, ceasefire, probably to regroup themselves because uh, what I heard is that there was a lot of destruction of the material and stuff like that. So they, they were trying also on their side to buy time. For them to say that because the government didn't respond positively to that ceasefire, so they try to blame the government, this is a very, uh, I can say, uh, not responsible, very irres irresponsible. Why did you start first to attack? I mean, you could have put more, I mean, pressure on the government a different way without attacking, causing death, destroying uh, goods of people, uh, having people running away, get people in fear because, you know, uh, the CR people are still living, most of the people that still have that tra trauma of 2012, 2013, when they, every city, they were destroying houses, raping, killing, and, and, and the people are still thinking about that. And uh, today, I mean, we are in a situation where it's difficult. I can say, I don't know if you heard about, the, you heard about the constitutional court, but also some city like um, Baiki, I think Baiki and another city, uh, I don't know if it's about Tangapo or whatsoever, where uh, rebels over there have told the Minuska that they will not allow people to go and vote. And I don't know if the minister agree with that or not. I mean, this will, I mean, there will be a sign of, again of another weakness. How come the people that are supposed to make sure the election happens don't do something? I mean, it's not about trying to put um, oil on the fire, but it's just to say the dysfunctionment, the dysfunctionality of this process. And uh, uh, not being over there, we, we, we all try to get peace. I know that, uh, fortunately, very few people will be able to go to vote. And, uh, uh, and, and I mean, the, 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 the other people that were trying to derail the vote, but the, the derailing of the vote, it was not just because uh, the Bozize is not part of the process. It's, it, it was mostly because they wanted from the beginning, they have been called for a transition. Transition means all those government of national union where everybody comes sit there. And this is what they're, they're trying to get. It was not just because of the fact that, uh, I mean, Bozize was just eliminated. Even the other members, the political opposition, they were for, I mean, most of them were for postponing the election, which make, I mean, no sense. Like I said, we cannot just stop everything. I think going forward, it would be better, and as the other panelists say, it would be good to call people on the table, even if that on my side I'm kind of critical to bring people that have weapons and to be part of the government because what they do, they send people in the government, and in the meantime they're controlling, they're continuing to control the zone where they are, and this has to stop, and that's probably what the Khartoum Accord, the argument. Have thought to do, they should have put in that argument that whoever are not respecting this argument will be, I mean, they will use force against them, disarm the people. I mean, this is the problem of what we, 
we're going through at this time for the last eight years. Disarming didn't work. And because of that, you have people, their business is to steal the gold and the diamond. For them, it's good that there will be no peace on CAR. Let's forget about the French or the Russian. Even those guys over there, they don't want peace. They want to be in control of those zones, continuing to get the gold and the diamond to sell it. So uh, to come back to your, to your question, uh, I mean, I just, I just really uh, pray that this election going through, that we continue to, to work and, and find with the time, build on something and bring the peace on the, uh, I mean, in the country. It's not going to be easy. And I know that, and I think people see our people know that. But uh, uh, the, the key here, I mean, is to be able to uh, the government of CR need to sit with the different partner to be able to also speak because no matter what they do, you can have idea, but those people have the power to disrupt everything that you want to do. So they have to find a way to get people to understand that the only way for the CR to be able to resort as a normal nation is to have disarming, dis disarmament of all those people that are not from the country using, because they, at the first in 2012, the reason why they came, they were saying that Muslim have been suffering CR. I'm from the Central African Republic. In my family, we have Muslim people in a different people. I'm from Bangasu, where we have Muslim, Christian, different people from different faiths. And I can tell you in CR for years now, the business commerce, you know, those little business are controlled by Muslim. You go to Bangui in Kilometer Sank, you will see they are the one running the, the little business. So you cannot say that they, 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 they're not part of the, uh, I mean, the society. The only things that is true is that we have the government of CR have in a certain way abandoned part of the Northeast, the Southeast, I mean, the far away region. And that there is, a, you know, like uh, when something is empty, somebody comes to occupy, and then people cross the border, work there, and then realize that, oh, my God, this country is rich. They have this and that. So people start to think a different way. And then, then you add the geopolitical problem with the oil. Uh, the one Bozizi signed with the Chinese. You put that together. They have used those people. It has been using divide, divided to conquer has been the philosophy or what's going on in CR, and because of the weakness of our leadership for several, I mean, 30 years now, mm. our country going down and down and down. And so it is the time now, hopefully the president in place or whoever is going to run the country need to understand that and, and change the course of what's have been going for the last 30 years. Bring back the authority of the country everywhere and restart to bring the people together, and that's that's possible. I think people are tired to get killed, and they understood that whoever is in power, they're not even helping their own clan or tribal uh, group, because their president, you go in Bozize region, what did he build over there? Nothing. President before him, he go in that region, they didn't do anything mm -hmm. that make a difference. So it's very few, a very few people, a clan of people that eating the food and not doing anything. So this is... Uh, this election, what is at stake is very important. It's not about the election itself, about how we're going to continue. Are we just removing everybody? The France is going to do, continue to do the, the nonsense. Okay. We as a CR people, we have to understand and we have to put pressure on all those people that try to work with us at this time. All right. Thank you uh, very much, Mr. Puhua. Uh, Mr. Safa Elvis, now we, let's try to, to analyze like the achievements of uh, President Faustin Akon Chouadera. To many people, the president has largely financed or uh, the, the president has been largely financed by the international community and he has worked for reconstruction of the army. The education has increased from 8% to 14% of budget expenditure. And the equality say that free care for pregnant women and children was made for uh, up to five years old, from yeah, for up to five years old, and more regular payment of civil servants. So there are many achievements that have been realized by President Fosayo Kanshwadira during his first term in office. 
what makes you think that he he will not be wanted by the people naturally without having to to try to fix the elections to his favor like claims his opponents no the main thing is that incumbents always first of all have an advantage on the ground mm -hmm. in any election incumbents have an advantage because Sometimes they will say it's better you deal with the devil you know than the angel you don't know. <laughs> so for the incumbent, he has something to show. For the man still to come, he leaves but on promises. I will do this, I will do that. And then if the person coming in is a former president, then if things went up until the president was removed as a coup d'etat, it means that they were, it was caused by managerial errors. Mm -hmm. And so that, just that alone can equally be another issue to move you out of the game. If and, if and only your ousting was not masterminded by the West. Mm -hmm. Because there are two forms of ousting here. There's an ousting masterminded by the people yeah. who take upon themselves their will to say that we are tired of this man, let him go. It's another one that is caused by manipulation, like the case of Gaddafi was mm -hmm. manipulation. The case of Laurent Gbagbo, it was manipulation by France. So at the end of it, in a case where the, 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 the people themselves, mm -hmm. without any external influence, decide that you should move and you come back again, it will still be very difficult for you to go through because... People have what they call they compare the present system what what they've gone through and they compare what you had done. There will be a cli quite a big difference. But I think for for Stem Chiadoram, mm -hmm. uh, it's very clear he has done quite a lot because he came at a time when my problem is for the army, the security, national security. Yeah. He, because you know in any government, top on the agenda is security. If you don't, if you have a government without any security, it becomes very difficult for you to work because most of the times, even implementing government policies, you cannot go you through can. it when you don't have. Security. That added security. So I think for that, Chadora did a lot because he was able to reshuffle the army. It is but true that Bozizi had some problems with the army because he dismissed even top ranking officials at random. The moment he suspected that you were not with him, you were fired. And that's an error for any leader. Once you have top ranking officials from captains, colonels, and above, and you take the idea of test stepping on them, whereas they had, had influence on particular battalions, mm -hmm. it becomes very dangerous because they can bounce back from any angle. First, they have top secret, military secret in their hands, which they can still use their expertise to even take sure. arms from elsewhere to sure. come and topple you. That one is a dangerous move. So in that case, even Bozizi made an error, which I think uh, when Faustin came back, he was able to correct that. And even though we still had parties of Seleka and Baleka rebels still carrying out the attacks, obviously, you know, uh, uh, from a war-torn country, when you're restoring peace, you cannot restore peace 100%. Sure. There are key areas where you can guarantee peace, mm. but minus that, you still have some skirmishes of insecurity. Mm which for the full security to take its course it must be done over time it cannot be done within a short period of time for sure. that one i think we must be able to praise for stem to very well uh, you don't understand that even literacy rate had dropped even low than low, lower than eight percent in the drc in the, in, in cr and cra mm -hmm. you know once war comes in like the case of the um, english-speaking part of the country it's called that school is forced to be stopped yeah. and many people cannot go to school for fear of exit of gun battle they could be caught in crossfire and all the like it's a normal phenomenon in a war situation. But I think that the most important that for me it makes a lot of sense is the free health care for children between zero and up to five years, five years. Including pregnant women. Sure. I don't know if Cameroon is understand what I'm talking about because these are aspects that even countries like Cameroon was supposed to have instituted. Okay. If you hear poor dying Monique Moniteka or Mateka who died at the like the hospital, a pregnant woman because she could not food abuse, you know. Okay. But if this case was like in Central African Republic, it means that she would be attended to because she's a pregnant woman and the care would be for free. So with the health care and the educational system, including military, I think Tuadora has done quite a lot. Okay, in part of this, case, let me not cut you. Yeah. I will come back to you. Let's get the caller who's been insisting, Mr. Tom. You're calling from Douala. Let's hear you. You're online. Hello. Hello. Yes, hello, sir. You're live on the program. Let's hear you. I can talk. Can I go on, to go on, please? Yeah, you can go on. You're live on the Pan-African debate. Good afternoon uh, to all and everyone. Happy Christmas. I am Com Bernard. I'm calling from Douala. What I want to say here is that uh, as an African, I feel very proud now to notice that the African countries are capable together to protect peace in Africa. I'm talking because uh, Cameroonian soldiers, Rwandans, Tunisians, 
Angolans with the help of Russia has stepped down in Central Africa because of the peace process for the electoral, electoral process in Central African Republic. This is a very good thing. From my own point of view, it shows that we Africans are capable to maintain peace in our countries. We are capable to stop violences that have been produced by France and other imperialist countries. This is the second time which I think well. Because in 2016 in Gabon, there were 500 mercenaries from France who were sent to destabilize the country. Since Ali Bongo, the prison head of state, shown his anti-imperialist attitude through some requir requirements in total. This shows that the United States of Africa is becoming a reality. It is a United States of America, of Africa, that is being built from one area to another. Because the United States of Africa is mainly characteristic of sovereignty for African countries. Even though it has economic and political dimensions, I would like our countries to continue in that way. That is the way through liberty, liberty for Africa. So the end of this 2020 year shows concrete steps towards the United States of Africa. This shows that our head of states are not only there to joke. They don't deserve us to insult them as we do many, many, many times. So let us take act of this precious, uh, a, a precious conquer, conquer. So what I wanted what to say, I will also thank Akim Media and all the various panelists who every day do researches, who think for Africa, whether culturally, whether politically, and economically. Happy Christmas again to everyone. I am Com Bernard from Douala. Thank you. Thank you, Com Bernard, for your contribution on the program today. Thank you very much. Now, Mr. Far Elvis, you are, you are talking, you are looking at um, the various successes of uh, President Akan Swadirani, equally appreciating his uh, work towards uh, uh, health, the health yeah. domain. Yeah. yeah, that's what you see in my point of view. I was saying that Tuadora already has a nice footprint. That if I were him, or I was the president of the constitutional court over there, mm -hmm. uh, the fact that Bozizi was given, uh, or he's uh, being charged at the International Criminal Court, uh, we could still challenge that because the International Criminal Court is a court only for Africans. Mm. That's why I loved Kenya, because at the time both president and the uh, and the opposition leader were all moving to Kenya, were all moving to the criminal court. They still went there and came back as one. Yeah. Because we must be able to understand that if the court is carrying judgment based on the International Criminal Court, then it means that the courts in Ivory Coast that banned Bagbo from coming in made an error mm -hmm. because no evidence has been found concerning crimes against humanity at the International Criminal Court. Ben Sudan knows that. And after being acquitted, for after serving for a longer period of time there, I think that what we would have done in our own court was to show that we equally have autonomy yeah. and respect by saying that, all right, Bozizi, you are coming because the truth is that Bozizi stands with Chadora. Chadora will win Bozizi because everything is clear. Uh, Bozizi was not very, he was too centralized in his government. His government was not inclusive with the other factions. That is why you had the Muslims setting up a coup and overthrowing Bozizi. Yeah, Bozizi. It's very clear. Mm -hmm. But if you come to Tuadora, you see that he's trying to consider a government that will extend his tentacles to other areas, even Bangusa and, and other like. So I think that, to me, 
all in all honesty is that he will obviously win. It's very sure, it's for sure. Okay. I understand the role he has played. So I think with his achievements, we see him winning already tomorrow. Mm -hmm. uh, even with the other advantages as incumbents having on the African continent, which is adding to it again, he has already won. Okay. But we should make sure that since it is late, where he could not encompass the various factions to run for the presidential election and then fail, so that would have had every reason to blame them. Now that it's really late, let him just go on. But I think after that, he should be able to form a unity government, just like uh, our human rights expert said here. When you're running for presidency, there are other positions that people can take. There are constitutional council positions, there are ministerial positions, director generals, they can still spread that mm -hmm. over. But for me, like what Mr. Eugene was saying, that if you bring them in, they can still have a stronghold. No. When you bring in an enemy into a government, you stand a chance of monitoring him, such that he himself even becomes afraid because what people come into the government and cause coup d'etat is when a government fails to monitor them. If I know yeah. I'm an enemy, I bring it to my government, I will monitor you in such a way that the next, even when you are going to, 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 to take a bath, I make sure that I monitor your <laughs> movement so at the end it will be difficult for you to overthrow me. So I think all the same, okay. uh, we'll be wishing peace to return to Central African Republic, especially tomorrow, where I know there will be low turnout, voters turn out tomorrow, I know, because mm -hmm. of the threats. It's but right. I think that after that, yeah. we should be preaching forward for peace because peace must return on the African continent, masterminded by Africans themselves. Okay. Thank you, Fa Elvis. Uh, I come to you, Mr. Tagia Fomeko. Let's get to hear your own appreciation of tomorrow's presidential That's election wonderful. and I'm your view. I'm very happy that we are converging mm -hmm. towards the <laughs> same point, the same that point that of right view. From the beginning, I was, uh, was dreaming. My prayer is really that with God's help, let Africans understand now the hidden agendas. And uh, uh, I think that Mr. Fai really developed a lot concern in France about that issue. That finally we understand the truth about that and stop killing ourselves. You know, I said that we converse to the same point, you know, and one of uh, these, our last caller, really said something wonderful. We, we can think about what happened really. It was something, we are not talking about it, mm -hmm. but we saw something happening in that country that started in 2016 and was led by the African Union itself and the yeah. SEAC, you know, the mm -hmm. economic. Uh, uh, the economic um, uh, community of, of, of Central African French-speaking countries, mm. anyway, and uh, that was wonderful, and all came to that accord in 2019. That was wonderful. It was led by the African Union, so it is possible, as he said. We need to believe that it is possible that we do things by ourselves, because as long as we will be in the in the in, the, in this kind of uh, uh, organizations like the African Union, we need to understand that to have really some 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 impact on the field, we need to understand that we have to form ourselves. And we had that kind of example in Central African Republic, where led from right from 2016 by the African Union, the, Af the, co the, the peace accord came on in mm -hmm. 2019 and respected by all the parties. This is very important. Even France respecting it. Mm -hmm. So we need to understand that it is possible. We need to tell our leaders, we know that at the moment, and I still back also, again, my co-panelists here, talking about, you know, uh, those advising to Adera. Not before. I'm saying now, after. If he wins the elections, I still want people to talk. If you are talking about democracy, let us say, if this one, because yeah. let us not make things like uh, he has arranged just to win. But mm -hmm. as I said, if he wins the elections, r let him really take the advice from the best that he has around. Sure. That is to be involving and not making the same mistakes that the others did in the past. And I think Mr. Toadera has for me the capability to really take that country to emergency. With what we have seen him achieving in these few years, since 2016, that democracy because mm -hmm. that were, those were the first elections. Sure. Democratic in the country, he won. We've seen the impact, what he has done, and that country starting seeing the light. And again, I would like to say something. The social medias, and the, sometimes we have to be careful, just like in Cameroon. Sometimes we talk so, we make things really like get worse, what they are not. Because from abroad, people might even think in Bamenda, in my country, in the Northwest, or in, in Southwest, in Buya, people are not alive. You know, people are going out for the activities. There are certain things that are not right. Yeah. And no country in the world really live in that kind of peace, which is an angelic peak. It's not like France has no problem like such. Yeah. You have cause issue in France, which is really a real problem. Of course. It's a real problem in France. But out from France, nobody talks about that. They make sure that out from France, they are together. 
Mm -hmm. So we need to, to make sure that oh, so we don't just go and take things that are in social media and just thinking things are so bad and also, no, things are getting better. And the African Union showed that example from the 2016 mm, negotiation that led in 2019 in that country to the peace accord. And I, and I feel, I think during these years that just passed, mm -hmm. all these factions of rebels, they didn't get to, the opti they didn't get to really act as one could have expected if they wanted to bring havoc. I think even themselves, they have started understanding who is the real enemy. Okay. And what, while we are getting on in this program, I would like to always come back and say to African people, to the African French-speaking countries, our only enemy is France. Let us say it loud and right, okay. is France. And as long as you don't understand that, even though you don't see them on the field, they are the one behind pushing the button. Go, get you guys, get and fight, kill yourself and all this. So okay. let us get to know our real enemy, it is France. Okay, thank you, Tagia from Macron. Let's take your last uh, opinion, Mr. Eugene Pehua. Let's hear from you. What's your impression about tomorrow's presidential and legislative elections and also the possibilities of President Alcance Tuadera winning a second term legitimately in that country? Uh, for sure, the election won't be held on uh, all the country, but wherever it will be held, I uh, expect uh, the President Tuadera to win that election. And uh, in that new term, uh, I, I, I'm wishing that President Tuadera can put the best people around himself to make the right decision to, to, to rebuild the people of Sierra, we build the Central African Republic and uh, start to put, I mean, to do his part that the next president we come after him, we find a functional government, you know, with all the borders secure. I mean, this is, this is, I mean, what I'm looking for that uh, we will be able, the people of Sierra, to understand that this thing of power, uh, it's not about one group gaining power and then thinking that they will benefit from it. It's, it. It never happened. The reality is never happened. It's maybe a small group of people around, people leading the country that take advantage of that. But that we have to understand that now on is not about because it's not the presence of my tribe or that I'm going to go against him. This is not the way it works. So we need to you know, like to be like the five fingers of, you know, the different parts of the body to be able to work together and, and move forward. And peace is the only way to achieve development. Peace is the only way to live uh, normally. And this is not normal that our youth have been sacrificed for almost 20 years now with conflict and counter-conflict and, and on and on and on. We really need to to, to be more patriotic and think about, I mean, everybody, not just uh, our own clan and just a, a small group of people. So this is uh, what I have to say about that. I just want the people running the country to make the right decision for the 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 the, 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 the interests of all the CR people. That's what I say, and I just want to thank Africa Major. Africa Media to, I mean, for everything that you do about African country. And uh, I hope that all African, you know, I'm, I'm a, a little bit Cameroonian because I went to school in College Vok Nyaoundé for four or five years in, uh, from 76 to 81. So I know the country really well. Uh, and uh, I, I, I'm very, I mean, I am very uh, satisfied for what you're doing. And you have been covering, we don't have a media to be able to speak freely about what we think and, and, I, and I hope that you can continue to do that and that uh, I salute all my, my 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 brother panelists I mean understood your point uh, the situation is not that simplest I mean it's CR, but I believe that even Cameron you go through some struggle and then I think it's a wake up of African and then this wake up we we will find the light we will see finally the light to be able to take ourselves control of our own destiny and this is what uh, it's all about all right thank you mr eugene <coughs> Pelema.
you are the co-founding uh, fond, uh, founding, fond, founding member of the Convention of Pan-Africanism and progress mm -hmm. you are joining us live from the United States equally we had uh, Mr. Tagia Fumerko, a human rights expert, human rights watch representative in Cameroon, and uh, equally, Fa Elvis, your journalist and a political analyst. Thank you very much, uh, gentlemen, for being with us this afternoon and for your brilliant analysis. Ahead, ahead we go, as is your opportun this opportunity to say a Merry Christmas to everybody, to all our viewers and those uh, lovers of Pan-Africanism. Bye-bye from Afrique Media. Bye-bye from this today. See you next week and have a wonderful weekend. Bye-bye.